Tonight, the story behind the uniform. Real people, real stories, real passion, real trauma. These are the brave men and women who have fought on the front lines. And tonight you're going to meet a man who explains how his passion for photography led him to enlist at the age of 31. And the stories he's capturing are gut wrenching and powerful. One frame at a time, these pictures are changing the way we view our brave soldiers. Tragically, this is also clear. Many men on both sides of the struggle will be lost. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Sending our sons and daughters into war to fight on the front lines. Men and women sacrificing not just their lives, but risking their mental health. Many come back changed forever by the trauma on the battlefield. Some soldiers still battling an enemy within, brought on by the pain of war. This is a story that goes beyond the headlines. It gives us a real look into the lives of soldiers behind the uniform. Everyone's also an individual, and I think a lot of people see the uniform, and they might see a robot or someone that doesn't really have their own identity, and that's not true. They say a picture's worth a thousand words, and if that's true, what story do these pictures tell? And are we willing to listen? Almost, in a sense, showing there's a human side to every soldier. There's a human side to every soldier, not every soldier lives and dies by the uniform. With every click of his camera, Devin captures a story. No words, just pictures. Some hilarious, others brutally honest and painful. This is obviously a, a pretty powerful photograph. Um, guy in his military uniform looks sad, uh, looking at the reflection and in the mirror, he's got a gun to his head. Mm. Russell's photograph definitely portrays what I like to describe as invisible injury. Not everyone has a physical representation of war, like scars or missing limbs. This picture shows that people go through things when maybe they look like they're not. So this is at least one of the more interesting and thought-provoking pictures in the book. Sure. Um, you show up to shoot this guy and, and, and clearly he lives a life of drag outside the military. In Nebraska, he is a, was, was a corpsman in the Navy and discovered his character on RuPaul's Drag Race during an episode of Military Makeover. Do you find that a lot of these guys, when you ask them to take their pictures, are they open to it? Are they excited about it? Are they fearful of it? Some people are anxious, uh, some people are excited, some people are grateful. Devin began photographing soldiers in 2014. Back then, he was a professional photographer, fascinated by the military and war. After years of documenting their lives, Devin felt something was missing in his. Because I started to feel like I had outsider syndrome. I just still find it so fascinating that at age 31, you've been a photographer, right? You have an artistic ability. And how that artistic ability actually led you to enlist at age 31. When I knew that the military had meant so much to me, after a certain point in this project, I started to feel kind of excluded because I myself hadn't served. Devin became one of the oldest guys to join the military. His passion of photography led him to find his purpose, telling the stories of fellow soldiers who are trying to reintegrate back into civilian life. I almost get a sense that, listen, these guys realize that they're maimed or they're injured, but they don't want to be treated any different. They want to be treated like they were before they went to war, like they're a regular guy that you're going to meet on the street. You never know exactly how someone responded to their time in service. Everyone's different. Everyone doesn't have PTSD. Some people do have PTSD. Just because a person went to combat doesn't mean they came back traumatized. The reality is 12% of Gulf War veterans suffer some form of PTSD. Roughly 15% of Vietnam veterans have been diagnosed with trauma from the war. 
As for veterans who hit the battlefield in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom in the Middle East, that number has skyrocketed to 20 percent. Go back. Do it again. Do it again. Get down. Now get up and go. RJ's an Arizona native from Tucson. He's a drill sergeant, one of the most intimidating guys on base. All the way. Go. Get out of here. RJ plays the tough guy role, but in reality, that's just a sliver of who he really is. What, you know, Devin here is doing is a really awesome project. Being able to, um, you know, professionally show both sides of each service member that, you know, we do have um, a sense of fashion and we do, um, you know, like to uh, have a different personality. You know, we're not always like robotic or, you know, um, in uh, the military mode all the time. You know, in a sense, I kind of feel like it's caretaking, it's advocating. Almost in a way for me to remind me not to forget, to not to forget that we are still at war, to not forget that we still have soldiers overseas who are day in and day out facing terrorists trying to protect our country, that even though we've been at war going on two decades, we cannot forget. That's really what I wake up and go to sleep thinking about every day. These people are individuals and they sacrifice that individuality for the mission. I honestly almost don't even feel worthy of the gift that I've been given to be invited into these people's lives. The book, Veterans Vision Project, it's available right now on Amazon. No words, just very powerful pictures. Devin tells me right now he's currently working on volume two.